Hi everyone, thank you so much for being here for my talk. Today, I will talk about our work, Live ROI, Region of Interest Analysis for Viewport Prediction in Live Mobile Virtual Reality Streaming. This work is done with my colleague Wei Tian Li and is supervised by Professor Sheng Wei at Rutgers University. Let's first look at the VR video streaming application. As we can see from the slide, the user wears a head mount device. By rotating the head, the user could watch different video content from different angles. As a result, the user could obtain a 360 degree view of the surroundings. And since the user could choose the video content by themselves, this application is very interactive. What's more, because of the popularity of live events, such as sports games and the news, the live VR video streaming application is very attractive. In the VR video streaming system, the server first streams the panoramic video to the user's head mount device, within which the panoramic video will be projected to a sphere. Then, the head mount device will collect the sensor data to calculate the orientation of the user's head, based on which they will render the 2D video for the user to watch. As we can see by comparing the two videos, the user only watched a subset of the original video. This scaling factor could be as high as 8, which means it takes more bandwidth than the traditional 2D video. From this table, we can see that if the user wants to watch an SDVR video in the user view, the overall resolution for the original video is about 8K, and it requires a bandwidth of 100 Mbps, which could be supported by the traditional Wi-Fi. However, if the user wants to watch an HD VR video in the user view, the bandwidth could be as high as 400 Mbps, which requires 5G network. If the user wants to watch the 4K VR video in the user view, which is the most popular video application right now, none of the existing wireless network can support this application. The current solution to this bandwidth issue is very intuitive. Since the user only watch a subset of the original video, the researchers try to only stream the part that the user will watch with high resolution. For the rest of the part, it could be either black or blur with low resolution. This is a typical workflow of a VR video streaming system. The camera will capture and upload the VR videos to the server. In the server, the video will be packaged into small video segment to be delivered to the user client via CDN network. Inside of the user client, the video segment will be rendered and displayed to the user to watch. To implement this solution, we need to leverage the concept of a tile, which is introduced by the state-of-the-art video encoding standard, such as H.265. Based on the standard, all the tile could be encoded parallelly with different resolutions. Here, we first divide videos into small tiles, then Based on the user's preference, we select the tile that the user is likely to watch to be encoded with high resolution. For the rest of the tiles, we will encode them with low resolution. As we can see from this video, we can guess that the user wants to watch the renos. As a result, we will select the center tile as the target tile and encode this tile with high resolution. We will encode the rest of the tile with low resolution. Using this way, the modified video segment is much smaller than the traditional ones. In this way, we can reduce the bandwidth consumption. As we can see from this flow, we can notice that the most important part is to select the tile that should be encoded with high resolution, which is called viewport prediction. Targeting on this goal, predicting the user's report, there have been many methods proposed and implemented. Some of them focus on the video-on-demand system, 
They either calculate the heat map of the user preference on the video content to predict the user viewport for the new user, or they train a deep neural network model to learn the user's preference on video content to predict the user viewport. However, for the method of this category, they require the historical user trace data and the video data, which is not available for the live VR video streaming system. Other methods that are targeting on the live streaming system will predict based on estimating the trajectory of a user head movement, analyzing the motion information of the video content, or using online deep learning. However, they still have some limitations. The velocity-based uh, estimation method cannot maintain high prediction accuracy for a longer duration. The motion analysis-based method will be impacted by the dynamic background of the video. The online deep learning method takes a longer time to update the model. As a result, it cannot adapt to the user's new preference quickly. As a result, it is very challenging to predict the user's viewport in the live streaming system because there is no historical data. And at the same time, we also need to make sure that the proposed solution could meet the real-time performance. The good thing is that we notice the correlations between the user's viewing pattern and the video content, which could serve as a predictor. We first conduct a user preference study aiming to explore this. We select two videos from the public dataset. The video has been watched by 48 users. We use the yellow rectangle to label the region that is related to the video theme, and also draw the heat map on the video to show where the user watched. The results show that for most of the time, the user will focus on the area that is related to the video theme, which could be leveraged to predict the user viewport. This is the framework of our proposed method based on the findings in the user preference study. Once we get the streamed video, we first get one video segment. In this work, one video segment is the unit for video processing and viewport prediction. Within this one video segment, we subsample the frames in one video segment only keeping T frames for video content analysis. For each selected frame, we uniformly divide the frame into small tiles. For each tile, we will process and analyze the actions inside this tile. The content of the same tiles from all the selected frames will be collected for video content analysis. More specifically, here we will use the 3D scene model for action recognition. To achieve high recognition accuracy, we need to cover more area to avoid missing the important part on the edge. So, here we enlarge the area but maintain the same center. The action recognition for one tile with the 3D scene model could achieve the real-time performance. However, we need to do this for every tile of the video, and the overall processing overhead for the action recognition for all the tiles will introduce huge delays and thus cannot meet the real-time performance requirement. To solve this problem, we use the multi-thread strategy, considering that the action recognition per tile is independent. By using the multi-thread strategy, we could benefit from the multiprocessor resource for parallel processing and further reduces the overall processing overhead. In this project, we assign the action recognition task of each tile to one independent thread with the identical 3D scene model. In the end, each thread returns action recognition result vectors as the description for the video content of the corresponding tile. Then, we could compare the user preference vector with the action recognition result vector for each tile to find out the best matched pairs. In our work, the user vector is formed by the user feedback based on the action recognition result vectors, indicating the content that the user previously watched. So, with this comparison, the best matched pairs 
is what we predicted. However, it's hard for machines to find the best matched pairs among different words. For example, the action in the red tile is jazz, and the action in the blue tile is waiting. But for the user, the preference is dancing. So we need to figure out the way for the algorithm to know which pair has closer meanings. In this work, we use the word embedding to analyze the semantic meanings of each word and further calculate the relationship between each pair of words. The word embedding is one of the natural language processing techniques which uses machine learning to learn the semantic meanings of a huge amount of words and further design a multi-dimensional space to vectorize each word. For example, assuming the word Embedding tools use two dimensions to represent a word. The word dancing will be assigned with four and two. The word waiting will be assigned with one and four. And the word jazz will be assigned with five and one. The position in the 2D space for the two pair, watching, dancing, the jazz and dancing are shown in the following two figures. By calculating the cosine similarity, we can notice that the jazz and the dancing has a higher value and will be viewed as the matched pair because they are more closer. In our work, the action result vectors contain the top five recognition results from the 3D CNN model and their corresponding output values. The user vector contains five actions and the likelihood value for each action. For each tile, we will use the word embedding to calculate the best matched pair and then multiply it with the corresponding values and the likelihood value. The result of all the tiles will be stored in a final score vector and we analyze and find out the tiles with high scores in the vector as the predicted view. This figure shows the intermediate results of the score vector and the final prediction result. Figure A and B uses brightness of the edge to show the values in the score vector. The brighter green means the higher values in the score vector, while the darker green indicates the lower value. Based on this, we finally selected the tiles with high values to form the predicted view, which are shown in figure C and D labeled by the green edge. After the user watched the video segment, we will collect the user feedback to update the user preference vector. We calculate the center of the user view and then locate the corresponding tile. We will use the selected action recognition result of this tile to update the user preference vector. If some item already exists, we will increase its original likelihood value. To evaluate the performance of our proposed algorithm, we use a public dataset. We use 12 videos, and each video has been watched by 48 users. As we can see from the table, all 12 videos cover a diverse set of video types. This is a prediction accuracy result. Here we also compare our proposed method with the velocity-based method, the online deep learning-based method, and the motion analysis based method. As we can see from the figures, our proposed method could achieve high prediction accuracy for most of the videos. We further check the error duration, which is the number of consecutive frames with prediction errors. As we can see from these figures, our proposed method has a lower error duration than the velocity-based method and the online deep learning based method. We first analyze the prediction errors with the selective streaming method. In figure A, the yellow rectangle is the actual user view, and the red rectangle is the predicted view. Figure B shows the watching experience when we show a blank area for the unpredicted area. Figure C shows the watching experience when using 20% of the original resolution for the unselected area, 
and the figure D shows the watching experience when using 60% of the original resolution for the unpredicted area. We can notice that a low resolution is much better than a black view. We also analyze the average bandwidth usage for each video. As we can see from the box plot, the motion-based method is sensitive to the dynamic background, and thus it obtains high and wide bandwidth usage. The bandwidth usage for our proposed method is low and narrow. We also show the micro result of bandwidth usage for one video, which is shown to the right. From the four sub-figures, we could also notice that the bandwidth usage by our proposed method is also low and narrow throughout one video session. In the end, we checked the processing overhead for the viewport prediction for one video segment. We can notice that the maximum value is below 1.8 second. For a two-second video segment, we will not accumulate the processing delay and thus meet the real-time requirement. To summarize, targeting the viewport prediction task for a live VR video streaming system we leverage the 3D CNN to analyze the action inside the video. Then, we use the word embedding to compare the video content to the user preference to detect the region of interest for the viewport prediction. The result shows a high prediction accuracy with significant bandwidth savings. At the same time, it meets the real-time requirement for live streaming system. This work is supported by the National Science Foundation, and we had open-sourced this project. That's all for this talk. Thank you very much.